Hey, hey, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. We talked about Staph aureus before. In the last video, we talked about the classification of Streptococci. Today, we'll talk about the characteristic of Streptococcus pyogenes, also known as Group A, beta hemolytic. Streptococcus. Why do you call it pyogenes? Because it causes genesis of pus. Or I should say it induces your neutrophils, pus cells, to make pus. Now let's get started. This is my playlist. Please watch these videos in order. When you hear in the news flesh eating bacteria, they are referring to cellulitis and necrotizing fasciitis caused by Streptococcus pyogenes. These are the most common diseases caused by Streptococcus pyogenes. We will elaborate on them on the next video where we specifically discuss the diseases caused by Strep pyogenes. But here are the diseases in a nutshell. We have pharyngitis, all right? How about pharyngitis plus fever, plus strawberry tongue, plus circumoral pallor? That will be called scarlet fever. How about honey crusts? Empetigo. What if this gets super infected with Staph aureus? Then you get bullous empetigo. Give me more of that pus. You have erysipelas, you have cellulitis, you have necrotizing fasciitis. If it digs deeper and reaches your blood, you have bacteremia, you can get sepsis, and a septic shock. Next, the immunological diseases caused by Streptococcus pyogenes. We have rheumatic fever, and post-streptococcal acute glomerulonephritis. We talked about the diseases caused by different types of streptococci in the last video. For instance, very dense is the dentist. Remember, I got some dental work done and because I had a weak valve, I developed endocarditis. How about strep pyogenes? Well, I've just mentioned them five seconds ago. Strep agalactia, neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, neonatal pneumonia. Can this affect adults? Absolutely. Group B strep or strep agalactia can lead to urinary tract infections, endometritis, and bacteremia. How about enterococci, endocarditis, and urinary tract infections? How about Streptococcus gallolyticus, formerly known as Streptococcus bovis? Well, remember the cow and the colon. Why? Because it causes infections in the cow, but in humans, it can be related to bacteremia, colon cancer, and liver disease, or any disease in the GI tract for that matter. Let's start by answering the question of the previous video. Why is Streptococcus pyogenes beta hemolytic? Why does it cause full complete hemolysis on the petri dish the answer is because streptococcus pyogenes has hemolysin also known as streptolysin hemolysin destruction of red blood cells hemolysis in the previous video we talked about the classification of streptococci when i say group a beta hemolytic streptococci or strep pyogenes i am referring to two classifications and i'm combining them together Group A is a serological classification, also known as Lansfield classification. When I say beta hemolytic, I am referring to the hemolysis classification. Why beta hemolytic? Because Streptococcus pyogenes causes complete hemolysis. Strep pyogenes is sensitive to bacitracin antibiotic and it is PYR positive, giving it the red color. PYR red. Both Staph aureus and Strep pyogenes have fibrinolysin with different names, however, staph leukinase versus streptokinase. In essence, they are fibrinolysins. Can this help us identify the bacteria? Yes, by anti-streptokinase or staph leukinase antibodies. Be very careful. Staph has coagulase. It is coagulase positive. That's why most of the infections are localized in one area of the body, such as folliculite. Oh, that's a tiny follicle. Or abscess. That's a bigger thing, but still in one place. Streptococcus is coagulase negative. That's why they spread like crazy. We're talking erysipelas. We're talking cellulitis. We're talking necrotizing fasciitis. Streptococcus pyogenes has streptolysin S and streptolysin O. You will make antibodies against the bacterial streptolysin O, and we will call these anti-streptolysin O, or ASO antibodies, which will help us identify the doofus bacteria. 
Moreover, streptococci have DNAs, and your body will make anti-DNAs antibodies, especially against DNAs B. Hey, Streptococcus pyogenes, you have the microphone. Tell me about yourself. Well, they call me pyogenes because I cause genesis of pus. Oh, right. You mean impetigo? Yeah. You mean cellulitis? Why not? Necrotizing fasciitis, septicemia, pyemia, etc. All of the above. I love riches. I like blood. But I hate sugar. What the what? I love riches and I like blood. That's why I grow on enriched blood agar. But I hate sugar. Put me in high concentration of glucose and I'll be killed. This could be one of the reasons that ketchup and ranch and mayonnaise and many other sauces have sugar in them. It's not just to make you like the product. It's also because high concentration of sugar is a preservative. It kills some freaking bacteria. Salt is another preservative too. That's why almost all of the canned food contains sodium. It's a preservative. Many of the antibiotics have sodium in them. Why? Preservative prevents the growth of many organisms. As Dr. Thomas Sowell says, there are no solutions in life only trade-offs. Let's talk about the virulence factors of Streptococcus pyogenes. Why does the bacteria need them? For many reasons. Avoids obscenization, adherence and phagocytosis, toxins and enzymes. Why do you want to avoid obscenization? Because if I avoid obscenization, you will not be able to eat me. Oh, it makes sense. Let's talk about the virulence factors of Streptococcus pyogenes. We have structural components, toxins and enzymes. Six structural components, one toxin, four enzymes. Let's go. Structural components. What do you mean? It's part of the structure. Oh, like part of the cell wall or the cell membrane? Absolutely right. Or part of the capsule? Why not? Give me examples. First, we divide them into group-specific and type-specific, i.e., do we find this component in the entire group of bacteria or just in a type? Give me example of group-specific carbohydrates. Well, this will be found in all of group A bacteria. It's Lansfield group A, as you know. It's usually a dimer made of N-acetylglucosamine, which was found in the cell membrane, if you have watched the previous videos. And this will make a dimer with rhamnose. What else do we have? We have type-specific. M protein, very important. Just like any protein, we have a carboxyl end or a C end and an amino end, amino terminus or N terminus. It's a protein with helical structure, alpha helix made of two polypeptide chains. The group A specific carbohydrates are to be found in the cell wall because it's the cell wall that possesses N acetyl glucosamine. However, the M protein is part of the cell membrane. What else do we have? We have M-like proteins on the surface. We have hyaluronic acid, not in the wall, not in the membrane, but in the outer capsule. And then we have factor H and factor F with the lipotechoic acid. When I say lipotechoic, you know it's in the plasma lipid membrane, i.e. the cell membrane. Next, we have one toxin known as erythrogenic toxin. Erythro means red. Scarlet fever, because scarlet means red, like scarlet. I remember during my pediatrics round that I had a colleague. Her name was Scarlet. I thought that was so cute, but I didn't open my mouth. Next, we have four enzymes. Streptolysin S, a hemolysin. Streptolysin O, another hemolysin. Streptokinase, a fibrinolysin. And DNAs. Right, hemolysin breaks down red blood cells. How about streptolysin? Oh, also hemolysin breaks down red blood cells. Streptokinase is a fibrinolysin. This is the famous TPA, tissue plasminogen activator. Streptokinase is the natural form. The artificial form is alteplase, tenecteplase, and any other place. They are used clinically as clot busters, fibrinolytic agents, thrombolytic agents in case you have a stroke or a heart attack. Let's bust that puppy open. And DNAs will bust your DNA. Let's continue our discussion on streptopyogenes variance factors. Let's dig deeper. You know we have Lansfield group A antigens, aka group-specific carbohydrates in the cell wall. You know that we have M protein in the cell membrane. More on that later. 
And we have M-like surface proteins. What's the function of them? They bind the FC portion. Of what? Of your antibodies. My immunoglobulins? Absolutely. And when this happens, do you think the antibody will be able to bind the antigen and then to bind to the macrophage so that the macrophage can eat the bacteria? Mm, nope, it's not going to happen. This inhibits phagocytosis. This is how the bacteria protect themselves from your immune system. Moreover, the hyaluronic acid in the outer capsule is very clever. Why? Because it looks very similar to your own hyaluronic acid, part of your connective tissue if you remember. Got some extracellular matrix going. It fools your immune system. Why? Because it looks very similar to your own stuff. Now the immune system is confused and stinking streptococcus pyogenes will evade your immunity. Moreover, factor H degrades C3B. Why do you call it C? Because it's a complement protein, subtype 3B. What's the function of this doofus? The normal function of this doofus, may he rest in peace, was opsonization. Why do you opsonize bacteria? To make her tasty so that my macrophage will enjoy itself while eating the stupid bacteria. But this is not going to work you will not be able to kill the bacteria. That's why factor H is a virulence factor that belongs to strep pyogenes. Next, we have factor F, which binds your fibronectin, another part of your connective tissue. Therefore, the bacteria adheres to your cell. I have bad news, I have good news. Bad news, the bacteria is adherent to my cell. Good news, because the bacteria is adherent to my cell, it's actually easier for me to phagocytose the bacteria in this instance. Next, toxins. What's the name of that famous toxin? Erythrogenic toxin. Erythro means red. Remember, scarlet fever, please. That's the old name of the toxin. The new sophisticated name is strep, because this is strep pyogenes. Pyrogenic, because pyro means heat. Fever. Oh, infections that cause fever. Absolutely. What's the name of the glass that is safe for you to put in an oven? Pyrex glass. Why do they call it Pyrex? Because pyro means hate, fever, duh. I want you to enter your kitchen armed with knowledge. This streptococcus pyrogenic exotoxin is a freaking super antigen. Erythrogenic toxin is a super antigen. What does that mean? I'm, I'm super. I'm going to bind two doofuses together. Your macrophage and your T helper lymphocytes. Oops, cytokine storm release. And this is the pathogenesis behind scarlet fever, no kidding, streptococcus toxic shock syndrome, not to be confused with staphylococcus toxic shock syndrome, and the nasty necrotizing fasciitis. Tell me more about my four enzymes, streptolysin S, a hemolysin, but it is oxygen stable, it's not damaged by oxygen. How about streptolysin O, another hemolysin, but this is oxygen labile, oxygen will damage this freaking toxin. Your body will make antibodies or immunoglobulins against the stupid toxin. The name of your antibody is anti-streptolysin O antibody. If this is high in your blood right now, it means that you're probably suffering from a streptococcal infection. Next, streptokinase, the famous TPA, a famous fibrinolysin, which will convert plasminogen, which is inactive, to a more active plasmin. What's the function of plasmin? A clot buster. It's going to bust the clot, which makes it easier for the bacteria to spread all over your body. And this is another reason why streptococcal infections are widespread all over the body, like cellulitis and necrotizing fasciitis, and why Staph aureus does not have that widespread infection most of the time, because Staph aureus lacks a streptokinase. Staph aureus has staphylothrombin to make a clot. Conversely, strep pyogenes has a fibrinolysin to break down clots. And then you wonder why streptococcal infections are known as, quote, flesh-eating bacteria, because they spread like fire. No pun intended. Oh! Why doesn't your woke professor teach like this? Last, we have DNA. Why? To break down DNA. Where do I find DNA? Well, in every one of your nuclei. Oh, including the nuclei inside my neutrophils, i.e. my pus cells. True. And when I break this up, what's going to happen? Now it's going to be easier for you to spread because you will convert thick pus 
into thin pus, which is a lesser of a barrier which facilitates spread of infections. Your body will make antibodies against DNA B, and these will be known as anti DNA B antibodies. And if this anti DNA B antibody titer is elevated in your blood right now, it probably means that you're suffering from Streptococcus pyogenes infection. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Now, let's talk more about the M protein, a type specific structural component of Strep pyogenes. It's a protein, right? Yeah. And as you know, genes code for proteins. What's the name of the gene? M, E M M, for the M protein. Let's talk about the structure. Well, it's a protein with a C terminus and an N terminus. C terminus contains C O O H, the N terminus contains N H2. The C terminus is anchored to the cytoplasm of the bacteria, and this protein is going to extend upwards and upwards and upwards and upwards until it is hanging outside above the cell surface, above the cell surface by its amino terminus. And this amino terminus is antigenic. Why is one type of Streptococcus different from the other? Because of antigenic difference thanks to the N terminus of the M protein. That was the structure. Tell me about the function, type specific cell wall antigen of Streptococcus. It's not a function, it's a clinical significance. This is for the lab test. This is how you tell the difference between different types of Streptococci. Here is the function for the bacteria. It inhibits phagocytosis. How? By inhibiting your C3B, your complement protein responsible for opsonization. No opsonization, no phagocytosis. No cash, no problem. Now we will review two very important topics very quickly. The first topic is the complement system. The second topic is tissue plasminogen activator, which is a fibrin lysin. We will go at breakneck speed. For a more detailed discussion, check out my complement video in my immunology playlist and check out my TPA video in my bleeding and coagulation playlist. Let's start with the complement system. First of all, why the flip do you call it complement? Because it complements the ability of your antibodies to perform their function. And when antibodies bind the antigens better, you will eat them faster and kick that stupid bacteria in the butt or in the pyrex. Do you remember fibrinogen? Yeah, it was inactive. How do you activate it? I activated it into fibrin by an enzyme known as prothrombin. How does that work? Proteolysis. Oh, it's the cleavage that activates the protein. Fibrinogen is a bigger protein than fibrin. When I break down the excessive pieces, I get clean active fibrin. This is activation by destruction. By the same token, on the same note, complement gets activated by proteolysis or proteolysis, which is cleavage. Here is C1, complement protein number one. This is inactive. This is a zymogen. This is a proenzyme. Then I will activate it into C1 active protein with a hyphen or a dash above it. This is active. This is not a zymogen. This is an enzyme. This is not a proenzyme. It's an actual enzyme. This is not inactive. This is active. How do I activate my complement system then? Well, we need a trigger. We need someone to pull the trigger. Once you pull the trigger, it's going to go downhill and we will kill the bacteria. Who pulls the trigger? Well, we have three people that can pull the trigger. The classical pathway, in this pathway, the antigen antibody complex is the person who pulls the trigger, or it could be alternative pathway where bacterial endotoxin and properdin pull the trigger, or it could be a lectin pathway where the mannose binding lectin pulls the trigger. Regardless of who pulls the trigger, the rest is history. Eventually, we'll make the terminal complement complex at the end part of the pathway, which is also known as the membrane attack complex, the MAC. The MAC will attack the bacteria. Since this discussion is about Streptococcus pyogenes, a bacteria, let me tell you more about the alternative pathway. Here is the alternative pathway. You start with a bacteria or a fungus or a virus, etc. And then we will try to activate C3 and convert it into C3B and BB. C3 came from here and the BB came from factor B. 
Whatever, when these two are active and bound together, we call them another name. They have a nickname, C3 convertase. Why do you call it C3 convertase? Because it's going to convert C3 into C3A and C3B. What's the purpose of C3A? Well, it has an A, anaphylaxis. That's why we call it an anaphylatoxin. What is the function of C3B? B is to push it forward propel it forward to kill the bacteria. Let's propel the reaction forward. C3B, BB, and C3B. Because we will continue to be inside the complement pathway, we will not leave it to perform a separate function. We will continue to be inside the path. All right, now we have C3B. All right, that's easy. And BB, I get it. And another C3B. Oh, so I see your point. You got this C3B, BB together and add a C3B, and now we have another compound. Yeah, what would you call that? C5 convertase, why? Because it's gonna convert C5 into C5A and C5B. C5A is an anaphylatoxin. C5B will continue to be inside the complement pathway until we end up with the terminal complement complex, AKA the membrane attack complex, which will attack the membrane of the bacteria. The MAC will attack. And now the bacteria is history. This is how the complement system works. That's why it was paramount on the strep pyogenase to inhibit your complement system because the complement system is dangerous to the bacteria. You see this C3B? Yeah, not only it propels the reaction forwards to kill the bacteria, but it also functions as an opsonin for opsonization to make the bacteria tasty. That's why. Streptococcus pyogenes took it upon herself to degrade and to bind and to destroy and deactivate your C3B protein. Let's talk more about the M protein. We have two types of this doofus. We have class 1 and class 2. Class 1 is exposed, class 2 is unexposed. Only the exposed, only class 1 can cause rheumatic fever. And this is the reason why if I have strep throat pharyngitis, I can develop rheumatic fever. But if I have an impetigo or any skin infection caused by strep, it's almost impossible, unheard of, that I will develop rheumatic fever. Why? One is exposed, one is not exposed. It's a different freaking protein. Oh, it actually makes sense. How do I remember which one is exposed and which one is unexposed? Well, remember that class 2 is too shy, unexposed versus class 1, which is promiscuous. Let me tell you about another function for the M protein. Internalization of what? Of the bacteria. Into what? Into your own cell. The bacteria is gonna linger in your cell for a longer period of time. And this is the reason behind persistent recurrent strep infections. Well, this kid always gets strep infection. What's going on? Internalization. It's the M protein doing crazy things. The M protein helps the strep pyogenase, together with the F protein, attach to your cell, gets internalized into your cell, and lingers there, causing persistent and recurrent strep infections. The other topic that we will review quickly today is the topic of fibrinolysis. Let's go back to square one. You cut your finger, a paper cut, because you're a doofus. What's going to happen? First, vasoconstriction to stop the bleeding, and then temporary plated plug, also known as primary hemostasis, to stop the bleeding, and then coagulation, coagulation factors, or secondary hemostasis, to stop the bleeding, and then after I made a robust thrombus to stop the bleeding. What's the fate of the thrombus? Well, if the injury is gone, it's time to remove the clot, destroy it, break it down, and go back to normal and regenerate the tissue and let the blood flow smoothly once again. How do I bust the clot? Fibrinolysis, TPA, streptokinase, etc. Again, this is the story of hemostasis or how to stop the bleeding. You injure yourself, you vasoconstrict. Then primary hemostasis, thank you platelets, followed by secondary hemostasis, Thank you, coagulation factors. Then you lay fibrin mesh work. Red blood cells get trapped. That's a strong thrombus. And then the clot's going to contract, releasing serum. And then let's repair this. Let's bust the clot and regenerate the tissue. Today, we're talking about clot busting. 
What's the purpose of the coagulation cascade, aka secondary hemostasis, is to convert fibrinogen into active fibrin fibers, which will trap the red blood cells to stop the bleeding. That's true. Now, how can I bust this clot? Well, you will need another hero known as plasmin. Plasmin is active, but it came from plasminogen, which is not active. How do I convert plasminogen, the inactive, into plasmin, the active? This is the story of tissue plasminogen activator. Why do you call it tissue plasminogen activator? Because it comes from the tissue. In strep pyogenes, this TPA has another name, streptokinase. Why? Because when you bust the clot, you will have the bacteria move and spread throughout your body. Move kinetic kinase of the streptococcus streptokinase. It makes perfect sense. I want you to think of thrombin and plasmin as enemies. Thrombin wants you to clot. Plasmin wants you to bleed. Your body naturally has TPA. Streptococcus pyogenes naturally has streptokinase. Both are fibrinolysins. What does IN mean? Protein. What does lyse mean? Lysis, destruction. What does fibro mean? Destroy the fibrin fibers. Bust that clot open. So the streptokinase will activate plasminogen into plasmin. Plasmin will break the fibrinogen and break the fibrin into degradation products. And it will destroy the stable fibrin into the dimer. Hey, Medicosis, I was in the hospital doing rotations and the physician ordered fibrin degradation products and D-dimer for a patient with suspected DVT. I never understood why. Well, here is why. Because DVT is a thrombus, the thrombus breaks up, right? And then it starts to spread. If you're making clots and dissolving clots, FDP will be high, D-dimer will be high, meaning that you are actively suffering from DVT right now or any other thrombus for that matter. TPA is naturally found in your body. What if I want to take a drug to bust my clot because I have a big uh, pulmonary embolism? The doctor will give you drugs. The doctor can give you streptokinase. Where did it come from? It came from the strep pyogenes bacteria. Or the doctor can give you artificial alteplase, retiplase, denectoplase, made by recombinant DNA technology by mimicking the streptokinase of strept. Why do we use them? They are thrombolytics, fibrinolytics, clot busters. Some pearls for the pros. After open heart surgery, sometimes TPA goes up. Why? Because it comes from the tissue and your tissues are injured after an invasive surgery like this. TPA can convert plasminogen into plasmin and before you know, you can bleed. Here's a quick question. What's the antidote for TPA toxicity? The answer is amino caproic acid. So if you realize that you were a doofus who gave too much TPA to the patient or too much streptokinase or alteplase, etc., you can reverse it with amino caproic acid. But only do this after you acknowledge that you are a doofus. But do it quickly because it's an emergency situation. And now to quiz time. Why do streptococcus pyogenes infections spread easily? Please mention three reasons. We talked about the different types of streptococci before. Please pause and review. Pause and review. And one more time. Let's talk about the characteristics of strep pyogenes using Picmonic, which is a lovely website. Use my link in the description to try them for free. They have more than 1,400 animated medical mnemonics like these. And they are actually in video format. Characteristics of strep pyogenes. Strept, here is a strepper. Pyogenes, here is a pie. Genes, here is the genie. Strepper, pie, genie. Strep pyogenes. It's a coccus, here is a cocked eye. Spherical. Gram positive, here is the angel. Beta hemolytic, here is the beta fish. Catalase negative, here is the negative cat. Sensitive to bacitracin, here is the bass, who is very sensitive. Strep pyogenes has a capsule made of hyaluronic acid, so here is the hay. This bacterium has streptolysin O, here is the O, as well as DNA enzyme. Don't forget that the fibrinolysin is known as streptokinase, here is the stripper's chite. Kinase, and the erythrogenic toxin is exotoxin A for scarlet fever, A for apple. And because it's an exotoxin, the pie is exploding to the outside. 
Streptococcus pyogenes will give you a positive PYR reaction showing the red color. In the next video, we'll talk about the diseases caused by strep pyogenes. If you can't wait, go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash metacosis and you will get hooked up. Pause and review. Classification is key. And by now, you should be able to close your eyes and enumerate everything that's written on the slide. And one last look. You know what should come after learning microbiology? Mastering pharmacology. Learn about the antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications by downloading my premium antibiotics course available at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. It comes with 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases with answers, of course, my Perfect Snetis Ultimate Notebook, one humongous PDF, please print it for maximum retention, and a mind map to help you memorize all of these antimicrobials. I also have a new toxicology course on my website with lead poisoning and arsenic poisoning and stuff like that. I also have a surgery high yields course and an emergency medicine high yields course all at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Initially, this discount code ran out, but now I renewed it for another 30 students. You can get a 50% discount by using promo code ARDS. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.